Hello, I'm David Ho, and today I'm going to talk to you about quantitative data collection. Quantitative data collection deals with things that are measurable and can be expressed in numbers or fingers. It involves statistical analysis. It relies on sampling and structured data collection instruments. It involves collecting and recording data in a systematic fashion. An advantage that results are easy to sum summarize, compare and generalize. Some of the common sources of quanta data would be closed ended surveys and questionnaires official statistics, maybe medical and education records, and a census. A census is when a complete population has been surveyed. Within the quantitative data collection tools are also some secondary data sources. So there may be some databases you can access. Census data is very good uh, to access. Maybe you can actually get some of your uh, questions on the census and something I recently did in a Pacific country. Academic articles and white papers all available on the Internet may have data of a quantifiable nature that will help you. Of course, not all secondary source data may be relevant or may not be focused specifically that to your information and evaluation needs. Surveys are the most common way to collect quantitative data. Um, and there's another video and PowerPoint that explains on surveys. So I'm not going to talk about this in detail today here. But they're easy to use. They can be electronic or paper. Electronic surveys have become very easy now with techniques like ODK, which is freely available. And you can actually program your survey to be collected very easily on a tablet or phone. You have to consider length and duration, question flow, the questions. Uh, are you going to have a self-administered system that people do themselves? Or do you have to have enumerators to do for you and language used? But I suggest look at the video on surveys and the PowerPoint. That will help you understand this one a bit more. Closed-ended survey questions come in different forms. Categorical survey questions can be dichotomous, yes or no, or could be multiple choice. You could have interval or ratio questions consisting of a rating scale, Likert scale or matrix questions and involve a set of predefined values to choose from on a fixed scale. Issues around surveys you have to think about are things like the sampling size and sample selection. A principle of quantitative data collection, the sample has to be randomly selected. It also has to be large enough to be generalizable or statistically valid, easy and applicable in the field and designed within the budget that you have available. Another quantitative uh, collection tool that you might have to use is a randomized control trial and again there is a separate short video that explains what an RCT is so I suggest you use that. This is a method to detect specific changes using statistical random sampling and comparing a group with the treatment i.e. the project intervention to a control group without the treatment has to be very carefully designed and it tends to be fairly expensive if done properly um, in terms of setting it all up and so on. Often used in the medical world, but can also be used, um, you know, in communities or agriculture where you want to see is the intervention working well in the community that has the intervention as compared to the community that does not have the intervention. So some of the pros, you certainly get certainty about cause and effect. 
higher legitimacy for conclusions, and probably easier to build knowledge systematically. On the con side, it requires very precise variables, often unrealistic assumptions about the number of possible causes. It can be expensive, as I said earlier. There's an ethical issue around the group that has the treatment versus the group that does not have the treatment. So, you know, that can be a problem in communities. And it's doubtful if this is the gold standard we should all aim for. And what I mean by this, the RCT may be very useful in a specific trial for a new vaccine, but is it appropriate for a much more simplified community development intervention? So you have to think around that as an issue. So again, this diagram is really just showing the randomized control method that you can use. So RCT limitations. RCT has to be built into the design of the intervention. Control groups cannot share the key characteristics. The possibility of contamination. Um, what we mean by this is that if the treatment uh, was an intervention that uh, the non-receiving group could in fact get so maybe they see what's happening in one community and they try and do it in their community. So the results would then be uh, skewed. It points to correlation and there are some ethical issues, as I mentioned before, about some groups receiving the treatment versus others who are not. So just a, a little introduction there on the quantitative data collection tools. As we for qualitative data collection tools. In this section, you will find short videos and explainers on most of the tools that we can use. So my suggestion is to look at those tools. I also want to make the point, as I've made in other presentations, do think in terms of combining qualitative methods with quantitative methods so that we end up with a mixed methods approach. It is this combination that can make it more robust, the work that we are doing. And as I've said before, if you need any help and advice, please do feel free to contact me and I'm gladly will help you. Thank you.